In today's video, can you achieve this look naturally? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rabella from ProPhysique.com and I'm coming to you from the Pro Physique studio here in Tampa, Florida. And today's video, I want to address the idea of, well, steroids, but I think at least in today's current environment, uh, the idea of steroids has completely changed from when I was young. So for those of you guys that don't know much about me, I'm going to give you a lot of background about me. So this video, if it's not what you're interested in, I'm sorry, but I've been getting a lot of questions about, do I do testosterone replacement therapy or hormone replacement therapy? Am I on steroids? Have I ever done steroids? And I just thought it'd be, it was good time to do a video about this subject because, um, I think it's a lot more acceptable now, right? Like, at least the stigma seems to be going away because there is a professional medical usage for testosterone therapy. Um, so we'll just start with it from here. At 45 years of age, I have never injected, taken, used any um, steroids or exogenous hormones or anything related to that. In fact, the last time I competed was on a natural bodybuilding stage and I did a polygraph and I did a urinalysis and all that stuff. And, and I understand there's a lot of people that say, well, you can, you can pass those and that's great. But you know, that's where I stand on the, the subject. It's, it's something that of course, as a bodybuilder who has been obsessed with, you know, bodybuilders like Arnold Schwarzenegger and, you know, some of the greats of that era, even Doreen Yates, Jay Cutler and those kind of guys. Um, it's always been an interesting thought to me, like, what would it do? What would I look like? But I've always had my reasons for just staring clear of it. And we'll, we'll get into that. But the, the idea of hormone replacement therapy, it's a rather new one. And I think in some instances, people don't actually understand what it means. So what I feel happens is that people see a picture or a video of a person, and I'll probably put a picture or a video here of myself at a very low body fat where I look, you know, particularly muscular, very close to getting on stage and competing. And they think, well, that's not obtainable naturally. And so I want to talk a little bit about what's possible for natural athletes to do. And something that often gets overlooked when it's in this conversation is that there is such a huge difference in the human condition. So what's possible for me to do might not be possible for you to do. And what's possible for Arnold Schwarzenegger to do might not be possible for me to do. And I think a lot of times, especially when we're young and we're coming up in the sport and getting into it, we start to almost feel bad that we don't look as good as somebody that we look up to. And don't get me wrong, I did this as well. I would see someone in the gym who doesn't work as hard as I do, hasn't worked as long as I have, and I would say, yeah, they're on steroids. Also, as someone who has decided to compete in natural bodybuilding, a sport that is very small, very fringe, very misunderstood, I've gotten to see some of the most impressive physiques you could ever imagine. You know, I'm very good friends with two of arguably the best natural bodybuilders that, that most people know about, and that would be Lane Norton and Doug Miller. And both of those gentlemen are exceptional athletes. You know, I still remember the first time I met them thinking, wow, they don't even look like they're the same kind of person as me, right? Uh, I walk around at about six foot three and around 225 to 230 pounds. But for me to compete, I have to get down to around 200 pounds. Well, Doug and Lane, uh, are both around 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and they both compete around 190 to 195 pounds. So you can see how at quite a bit shorter, they just have so much more muscle density than me. And it would be very easily for me to kind of go that direction and think, well, they're just not natural. But instead, I've kind of correlated to something else I've noticed in life. So one way I like to think about things when it comes to what's possible natural is you know, you go to an NBA game and you see Yao Ming who is seven foot six, and then you see Muggsy Bogues who is five foot four, and they're both professional athletes. And it just reminds me how different we as human beings can be. To me, it's no different than if you go to a dog park and you see a pit bull walking around with so much dense muscle on its body compared to like a poodle, right? They're both dogs, but Obviously one has a genetic makeup that is much different from the other. And so 
I no longer try to compare myself to the people that I feel um, don't really relate to me. I like to look at bodybuilders that are tall and a little bit more linear. And I think, hey, I actually do a pretty decent job putting on muscle. And so some people have actually come up with formulas or equations where they say what's possible naturally and what's not possible. And I've never really worried about those things. And here's why. Because unless you've put in a decade or more going to the gym, being consistent, really paying attention to your nutrition, really progressing with your knowledge and understanding of resistance training and how to put on muscle, trying to progress, hit PRs, do powerlifting meets, do bodybuilding competitions, whatever it might be that gets you excited about going to the gym until you've done that for 10 years or more, you really don't know what's possible naturally. Do gains diminish over time? Absolutely. Does that make the process any less fun? For me, it has not. I have been consistently training in the gym since I was 17 years old, okay? Yes, there's times when I'm a little bit more consistent and there's times when I'm a little bit less consistent and that's why I love bodybuilding. I first did my first bodybuilding show at 32 years old, okay? Um, and I've competed up until two years ago when I was 43 years old was the last time I competed. And you see the point being is that I find ways to keep myself excited about the process about getting on stage, about getting into the gym. And I've never found the urge to get started in taking something that once I start, I'll likely never be able to stop. And that in lies the real issue and why I've stayed natural. As curious as I have been about the process, I've seen a lot of people start stuff, take stuff, make a lot of progress, look amazing, but it's all temporary, okay? unless you are going to continue to take stuff for the rest of your life. And why is that? Because when you put hormones in your body, the part of the body that produces those hormones naturally says, oh, we're good. We don't need to produce it anymore. Okay. And I'm sure there's ways that you can go on stuff and come off stuff and, and, and manage that, but it's not something I've ever been interested in. Hell, I have a two year old son. So, a lot of the things that I hear about hormone replacement therapy and testosterone replacement therapy, they're therapies for people that are not living a healthy life. And I couldn't say that's the case for me. I still feel amazing. Yes, I might look like an old snowman with this gray hair, bald head, but between my ears and from the neck down, I still feel like I'm 20 years old, sure. Every now and then I get a little ache or a little pain that probably goes away a little bit quicker in my 20s. But most of the signs that I have, I feel amazing and I haven't felt the need. Will I explore options? Absolutely, when my quality of life begins to get diminished. But I intend to compete in 2022 as another natural athlete. And I think at 46 years old, I'm gonna show you guys a thing or two.